To get started, try evaluating this product. What's 3 times 5? Exactly, 3 times 5 is 15. Now this means that 3 and 5 are factors of 15. What's a factor? Well, if you take 15 and divide it by 3, you get 5, which is an integer or whole number. So that means 3 is a factor of 15. What if we divide 15 by another number, like 6? Well, 15 divided by 6 is 2.5, which is not an integer. That means 6 is not a factor of 15. Try another example. Which of these numbers down here are factors of 28? In other words, dividing 28 by which of these numbers gives you an integer? Nicely done. 7 and 14 are both factors of 28. If you divide 28 by 7, you get 4, which is an integer. And if you divide 28 by 14, you get 2, another integer. So here are all the positive factors of 28. 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. If you put minus signs in front of all these, you would have all the negative factors as well but we usually won't bother with those. Now, if you look at these factors, they come in pairs, like 1 and 28. Notice that 1 times 28 equals 28. And 2 and 14 are another pair of factors that multiply to 28. Finally, 4 times 7 is also 28. Next, try listing all the positive factors of 12. There are 6 factors, so make sure you find them all. Excellent! One way to find the factors is by looking for pairs that multiply to 12. So that's 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. That's a lot of factors. Now you may remember that even numbers are integers like 2, 4, 6, and 8, while odd numbers include 1, 3, 5, and 7. So what does it really mean for a number to be even? Well, if a number is even, then that means it has a specific factor. What's the missing number that makes this sentence true? Precisely. So saying an integer is even is exactly the same thing as saying that 2 is one of its factors. And saying a number is odd means that 2 is not a factor. Okay, last question. What are all the positive factors of 49? Can you find all three of them? To get started, go ahead and list all the positive factors of 10. Can you find all four of them? Right, so one way to find the factors is to look for pairs of numbers that multiply to 10. So that's 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. So these are all the factors of 10. Next, try identifying all the positive factors of 13. Right, so the only two factors of 13 are 1 and 13. Numbers like 13 get a special name. They're called prime. A prime is a number whose only positive factors are 1 and the number itself. So next, take a look at these numbers down here. Which of these are prime? Nicely done. So 5 is prime. 11 is also prime. 14 is not prime. 14 equals 2 times 7, so it has a few more factors. Similarly, 27 has factors of 3 and 9 and 31 is another prime number. So here's a fun question. What's the smallest prime number? And by the way, the number 1 itself is not considered to be prime. Yes, 1 is its only factor, but in more advanced math subjects like number theory, it's more convenient to say that 1 is not prime. Instead, 1 is known as a unit. So anyway, given that 1 is not a prime, what's the smallest prime number? Excellent! So 2 is the smallest prime. 
It also happens to be the only even prime, because every even number greater than 2, like 4, 6, and 8, they all have 2 as a factor. So 2 is the smallest prime, and there are lots of prime numbers. Here are the first few of them. As you'll prove in a later lesson, there are actually infinitely many prime numbers out there. Crazy, right? Okay, so those are the primes. All the other positive integers are called composite numbers. They have factors other than 1 and themselves. So which of these numbers here are composite? Nicely done. Now you already found that 2 is the smallest prime. 6 is composite because it has other factors like 2 and 3. 25 is also composite. 5 is one of its factors. 29 is prime and 39 is another composite because its factors include 3 and 13. When you see numbers like these, there are a few tricks you can use to find if they have factors of 2, 3, and 5. But determining whether large numbers are prime or composite can be very challenging. For example, would you guess 91 is prime or composite? It's hard to tell by just looking at it, right? 91 turns out to be composite. It's 7 times 13. But what about really big numbers, like 15,485,863? Well, you can look it up in a table of prime numbers, and sure enough, it's prime. Because it's so hard to determine whether big numbers are prime or composite, primes are commonly used in cryptography, the science of codes and code breaking. And you can explore this in a later lesson. Suppose you have 7 times 6 minus 2, with the 6 minus 2 in parentheses. According to the distributive law, which of these is an equivalent expression? Right, you distributed the 7 onto the subtraction inside the parentheses, giving you 7 times 6 minus 7 times 2. Next, try working backwards using the distributive law. Now, you're starting with 3 times 2 plus 3 times 8. Which of these is an equivalent expression? Nicely done. So 3 times 2 plus 3 times 8 equals 3 times 2 plus 8 in parentheses. And that's because you can distribute the 3 onto the 2 and the 8. But you can also think about this another way. You're adding together two terms with a factor of 3 in them, so you can write it with the 3 being multiplied outside the parentheses. Starting with an expression like this and undistributing the 3 is called factoring out. So for this sum, we factored out a 3. Let's look at another example. 9 times 7 minus 9 times 4. How would you factor out the 9? Exactly, you can write this as 9 times 7 minus 4 in parentheses. Both of these terms have a common factor of 9 and you can factor it out. Next, suppose you have 4 times 6 plus 4 times 7. Notice the common factor of 4. You can equivalently write this as 4 times another number. What's the missing number here? Excellent! Factoring out the 4, you got 4 times 6 plus 7 in parentheses. And 6 plus 7 equals 13. So 4 times 6 plus 4 times 7 equals 4 times 13, the sum of 6 and 7. Next, suppose I have 6 times 5 plus 6 times 2 minus 6 times 3. I can write this whole expression as 6 times what number? Very well done! You factored out the 6 to get 6 times 5 plus 2 minus 3 in parentheses. Now 5 plus 2 is 7, and subtracting 3 gives you 4. So this expression equals 6 times 4, which is 5 plus 2 minus 3. Now in these examples, we've always had a common factor on the left. 6 times 5, 6 times 2, and 6 times 3. But that won't always be the case. For example, suppose you have 5 times 8 minus 8 times 1. The common factor is 8, so this equals 8 times what number? 
Right, so if you factor out the 8, you have 8 times 5 minus 1 in parentheses, which equals 8 times 4. So whenever you're adding or subtracting terms with a common factor, you can always factor it out. Let's start with a factoring example. If you have 5 times 8 minus 5 times 2, this equals 5 times another number. Try factoring out the 5 to determine this missing number, or click down here to review. Exactly right, so you can factor out the 5, giving you 5 times 8 minus 2 in parentheses, which is 6. Why does factoring out even work? Because it's the same thing as the distributive law, but working backwards. The distributive law says when you have an expression like this, you can distribute the factor of 5 onto the numbers being added or subtracted inside the parentheses. So before we factor out any negative numbers, let's look at distributing negatives. If you have negative 3 times 7 minus 5 in parentheses, then you can distribute the negative 3. Which of these expressions do you get? Nicely done. You get negative 3 times 7 plus 3 times 5. Why is that? Because when you distribute a negative, you should flip the signs inside the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you have positive 7, so distributing gives you negative 3 times 7. And inside the parentheses, you have minus 5, so distributing gives you plus 3 times 5. So, if distribution takes you from this expression to this one, then factoring out takes you from this expression to this one. And so, just as distributing a negative means you should flip the signs, factoring out a negative also means you should flip the signs. You have negative 3 times 7, so after factoring out the negative number, you get positive 7 inside the parentheses. And over here, you have plus 3 times 5, so factoring out gives you minus 5. Try another example. Let's look at 8 times 9 minus 8 times 2. If you factor out negative 8, then inside the parentheses, you'll have terms with 9 and 2. Choose the correct signs for these terms. Excellent! We have positive 8 times 9. Factoring out a negative 8, we should flip the sign, meaning we have negative 9 inside the parentheses. Negative 8 times 9. Factoring out a negative 8, we should flip the sign, meaning we have negative 9 inside the parentheses. And we have minus 8 times 2, so we have plus 2 inside the parentheses. So we have negative 8 times negative 9 plus 2 in parentheses, so that's negative 8 times negative 7. Let's make sure we factored out correctly. Go ahead and evaluate these two expressions, making sure they really are equivalent. Excellent! 8 times 9 is 72, and you're subtracting 8 times 2, or 16. That gives you 56. And over here, the minus signs cancel out. So sure enough, negative 8 times negative 7 also equals 56. So this rule for factoring out negatives really does work. Try finding the missing numbers in a few more examples. Here, we're factoring out a negative 6 from this expression, and a negative 4 from this one down here. Brilliant! So flipping the signs, both of these minus signs become plus signs, and we have 7 plus 2 in the parentheses. So this top expression equals negative 6 times 9. And down here, the plus signs become minus signs, so we have negative 9 minus 3 in parentheses. So this bottom expression equals negative 4 times negative 12. For your final challenge, take a look at this expression, which includes three terms. Factoring out gives you negative 2 times what number? Nicely done! So flipping this first minus sign gives you positive 8, flipping this plus sign gives you minus 9, and flipping this minus sign gives you plus 4. So factoring out, you get negative 2 times 3. So whether you're distributing negatives or factoring them out, you should flip the sign for every term.